Welcome to Aspire Test Prep's video on data collection. Data collection is one of those funky new topics being brought into the new test, the redesigned SAT, and it's a lot easier than it looks. So hopefully we can clear up any areas that you might be a little shaky on right now. Aspire Test Prep offers online SAT and ACT tutoring for students and test prep classes for high schools. You can reach us at www.aspiretestprep.com or tutoring at aspiretestprep.com. And uh, you can call the phone number on the screen. The way to take best advantage of this video is to go to our website, click on Prep for Free, go to the worksheet for practice problems on data collection, try the problems on your own, check the answer key, see how you're doing, and then refer to this video for help on problems you need help with. Let's go ahead and get started. On question number one, city planners want to understand the extent of public support for building a new skate park. They surveyed 200 adults with teenage children. According to the survey, most of the respondents supported the idea of building the skate park. Which of the following is true about the city planners survey? One area that's important in the subject of data collection is surveying the general public for opinions. So if the adults that are being named have teenage children, so they're definitely that means they're definitely going to be more sympathetic to the needs of children, such as building a, state par a skate park. So the problem with this is that the survey fails to include a balanced representation of city residents. It's specifically picking from a pool of people who's more likely to side with issues of importance to children. Okay, going over to number two. A political action group surveyed a thousand residents who were selected at random from a large county and asked each of them, do you support the Democratic candidate for Congress? Of those surveyed, 55% said they did in fact support the Democratic candidate. Based on the results of this survey, which of the following statements must be true? What we're doing on this question is we're, we're trying to acknowledge that surveys are not definitive. If I do a survey and 99% of the people believe something, that only means that in the future, 99% of the people are likely to agree with that thing. But we can never do a survey and definitively say that because of my survey, I know for a fact that this is what's going to happen. So when we look at choice one, of the citizens in the county, 55% are in support. Well, that's a definitive statement. We don't know if they're in support. We know that it appears that 55% are in support. So we can't pick that one. Choice two, if another 1,000 citizens randomly selected from the county were surveyed, 55 of them would report that they also support the Democratic candidate for Congress. Once again, this is making a definitive statement, and there's no law that says that just because 55% of the people said something on one day, that that same thing would happen a different day. It's too definitive. It doesn't leave room for any possibility of something unforeseen happening. Choice number three, if a thousand citizens from a different city were surveyed, 55 of them would, would report that they support the Democratic candidate for Congress. Once again, a definitive statement, 55 of them would report something. Well, we're not fortune tellers, so we can't necessarily make that claim. So in this situation, none of these choices are correct. Going over to number three, a research study was conducted to find out how many local teenagers play too many video games. Researchers waited outside of a school and interviewed students after dismissal. Of the 250 students interviewed, 200 said that they play more than one hour of video games per day. Which of the following conclusions is best supported by the sample data? A. The majority of teenagers at the high school play less than one hour of video games per day. Well, here the majority actually said that they play more than one hour a day. So this is the exact opposite of what we want. B. The average amount of video game time played per day by students at the school is at least one hour? Well, that sounds like it's in line, but once again, it's a definitive statement. It says that this is, right here, this is the case at the school. And we still don't know that for sure. Just because we, could, we conducted a survey doesn't mean that we're 100% sure of anything. C and D are more along the right lines because they use the important word approximately. Approximately means I have a hunch, 
but I'm still estimating, I'm still not 100% sure. Approximately 80% of the students at the school play more than one hour of video games per day. That seems to be supported because out of the 250 students, 200 said something, and 200 divided by 250 on your calculator is 0.8, which is the same as 80%. So that's in line, and it says approximately, so it leaves room for error. D, approximately 80% of the students at the school who play video games do so for more than one hour. Well, in order to have found that out, we would have had to survey students who play video games, and we didn't. We surveyed general students at the school. So the only one left standing is C, and the difference between C and B is that B makes a definitive statement right here, which we're not allowed to do. Looking at number four now, to determine the effectiveness of a new anti-pain medication, a pharmaceutical company conducted a research study. From a population of people suffering from chronic pain, 500 individuals were selected at random. Half of them were given the new anti-pain medication and half were given a placebo. The results show that patients who received the medication significantly improved as compared to patients who did not receive the medication. Based on the design and results of the study, which of the following is an appropriate conclusion? Is the anti... It, okay, well, looking through the answer choices, we can say that choice B makes a definitive statement. It heals pain better. Choice C says it will improve the pain. And D says this will heal the pain. So based on a study, we can never make those kinds of claims. So without having to really get too deep into what the question was really saying, we can already say that A is going to be the more correct answer choice. Last question, number five. A researcher conducted a study to determine whether Americans prefer going to the beach or to the pool. The researcher asked 1,000 Miami Beach residents and 117 refused to respond. Which of the following factors makes it least likely that a reliable conclusion can be drawn about swimming preferences of Americans? Well, the problem here is that we asked Miami Beach residents, people who live on the beach, people who are more familiar with the beach than someone, than people who live in a landlocked location. So the problem is the survey was given in a place that was going to be inherently biased. It was a beach town. So where the survey was given is the factor that makes it least likely that a reliable conclusion can be drawn. After seeing this video, you can go back to our webpage and try the official SAT and, ACT, SAT and PSAT questions that are featured on the website and go ahead and try to find out whether you feel like you've advanced on this concept. If you feel like you're getting a lot out of these videos, feel free to recommend our tutoring or our test prep classes to either your friends or your local school. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at tutoring at aspiretestprep.com. Have a great day.